Hello everybody. Today we are going to be making a fall landscape using pumpkins to help show perspective. You'll need some paper and I'm using a half sheet of paper. So this is six inches by nine inches. Not huge, not too small, just right. You'll need a pencil and you'll need some color pencils. If you don't have color pencils, you can use crayons, but sometimes it's fun to use color pencils too. I write my name, bottom right hand corner. I'm going to start by adding hills in my background. The background is what's far away in your picture, okay? So I'm making some rolling hills. I'm going to add in some clouds in the sky. If you wish to make a sunshine, that's fine. If you want to add more clouds, less clouds, it's up to you. Now I'm drawing a light line here. This is just to indicate where the ground is flat and then gets starts going up, getting higher. Because usually ground doesn't just go flat, 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 poof, hills. It usually starts building and gradually going up. But this is where like the farm would be, where the pumpkins have grown. Now. This is my background area. Very little detail. You don't see people back here on the hills far, far away. You don't see houses. You don't see the trees. What you will see are the colors of the trees, the leaves. You don't see all the individual leaves. You'll just see kind of the colors as they sprinkle across the hillside. Now I'm going to drop down to my foreground. The foreground is usually found towards the bottom of our paper usually, sometimes it can go all the way to the top, but foreground is usually found towards the bottom. It is what's closest to you in your picture. Background is what's farthest away. Foreground is what's closest. So I'm going to make kind of a larger pumpkin here for my foreground because this pumpkin is closest to me. Now I'm going to do a pumpkin that has a cut stem. You know how sometimes people will draw like the little green vines and the leaves and all that good stuff? Well, if a pumpkin's been cut, they don't have the vines and leaves. They've already been cut away from the vine. So I'm gonna do just a stem. And you know, at, at that point, usually they've turned kind of a brownish color, tanny brown. I'm gonna put another pumpkin here in my foreground. So of course it's gonna be a little bit bigger than the other pumpkins I'm gonna make. Now guys, pumpkins come in all kinds of shapes and colors, and some are tall and thin, some are short and chubby, all kinds. Some have lumps and bumps, some have green on them, some have yellow on them. I've seen kind of whitish pumpkins. I mean, there's all kinds of pumpkins. So if your pumpkin doesn't look quite like mine, that's okay. Maybe you're, you've got a special pumpkin that you've created. So this is my foreground. It's closest to me. I'm going to put a little bit of grass tufts in here. I don't need to draw grass clear across because I'll color it green eventually. So I'm just putting a couple tufts of grass for detail. Now when the pumpkin is laying on the ground, it's pushing some of that grass forwards. So I make some of that grass lean forwards to make it look like the pumpkin's pushing it that way. Now I'm going to put another pumpkin that's a little bit farther away. So when I want it to be farther away, it's as if we're walking doo -dee -doo -dee -doo, in the pumpkin patch. So I'm walking farther away. So the pumpkin will be up higher in my picture. And the pumpkin's going to be a little bit smaller because it's not as close. So we're kind of venturing into the middle ground area of our picture, okay? So it's more towards the middle. It's no longer super duper close, but it's not super far away either. This is the middle ground. Foreground is close, should be large and have lots of detail. Middle ground is in the middle, it's medium size, has medium detail. Background is far, far away and has very little detail. I'm gonna walk on back a little bit more. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do. And make another pumpkin. 
Now, as I was saying, you would not put like a pumpkin on the hill far, far away because it's just, just too far. You wouldn't see a pumpkin on that hill. <laughs> and I'm gonna put a pine tree here. Now this pine tree is towards the middle. So I'm not gonna put a lot of detail in it. Now, you might notice that it's going up over into the background area, okay? Foreground, middle ground, and background is all about where it starts. So if I were to draw a tree here in the front of my picture, and it went all the way up here to the top, it would not be in the foreground, middle ground, and background. It depends on where it starts. So if it starts here in my foreground, that tree would be in the foreground, even if it goes this way. This tree starts in the middle ground, and even though it crosses over the background lines, this means it is in the middle ground because that is where it starts. Make sense? Oh, bell, day's over. <laughs> um, so I would say make five or six pumpkins in your picture would be good. You can add some trees. If you wanna make like a deciduous tree that loses its leaves, that is totally okay as well. Now, when we go to color our pictures, I want you to start with the color red. We're gonna use red and push fairly hard here on these lines that we drew, these segments of our pumpkin. So I'm pushing pretty hard. Not so hard that I break my color pencil. And I would do all of them. I like to use one pencil at a time. So I do all my pumpkins with red first. And then I would come back in and then do my orange. But. I'm just going to show you this one pumpkin to start with. So I push pretty hard and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start getting lighter. Lighter and lighter. Okay, so I'm just applying less pressure with my color pencil, I'm not pushing as hard. So once I've done that, Forgot to do this last segment. <laughs> I'm going to get orange. Now, in order to make this not look like stripes, you have to make sure that you go over top. Oh no, my pencil broke. Well, that is pretty much a normal occurrence when it comes to colored pencils. <laughs> colored pencils have a soft lead and they break sometimes like that. So I'm gonna go over top of where I colored red because if you lay the colors beside the red, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get stripes. And we don't wanna make a stripey pumpkin we want the colors to kind of melt into each other. So I have to go back over top of the red with the orange. And then I go out and I get lighter because I'm gonna mix yellow into it as well. Finally, I get my yellow color pencil. And once again, I wanna go over top of the other colors I've already put down. This makes the colors blend together. If you don't do this, you're gonna get stripes. And that's not what we're going for here. We want it to blend. So the colors look like they're melting together to make it look extra special. I'll take brown for my stem. All right, let's move to a picture I've already been working on. <laughs> so with my sky, what I like to do with colored pencils is I'll trace around my clouds and I trace around the hill and I push it a little bit harder, get a darker color. And then as I go away from those objects, I start getting lighter. So the sky is a sky blue, it's a light blue. So I don't wanna push hard everywhere. Your hand will get super tired. You'll get really tired of sharpening your color pencil over and over again. So by going darker here and then getting lighter, you're gonna save yourself some grief. <laughs> 
Now, with my grass, um, I used a little bit of blue here to make a shadow underneath my pumpkin, so I colored it green. Um, I mixed a little bit of yellow here so I get some variation in my green. But then I used blue over top of the green to make a shadow. Now, with my hills in the background, I colored them a completely yellow first. Then what I'm doing is going back over top of it very gently and adding in some other fall colors. Because usually a hillside is not completely one color, usually there's a variety of colors, trees change at different rates. So you don't want it to be one solid color, that won't, that won't look quite right, okay? But you don't have to add any details, you don't have to add branches, you don't actually have to draw the leaves on there because this is far away and you're not gonna see that. You're just gonna see the color that the leaves lend to the hillside. Now for my pine tree, pine trees are evergreens because they're always green. So I'm gonna add some green in here. And I'll take my green all the way back to this line. Now I probably do need to add another tree or something over here just to make it a little bit more interesting. I mean, I like my pumpkins, but it needs something over here. Maybe a barn or a little pond or another pine tree or deciduous tree. It just needs something. So I'll add that as well. But the pumpkins, foreground, middle ground, back middle ground. We see the size change and the position change. So as things go back, they get smaller and they go higher up in our picture to show foreground, middle ground, background. All right, happy creating guys. Have a good day.